Hello everyone, this is Adam for realhomerecording.com. DDMF IEQ Pro is what I like to call the poor man's FabFilter Pro Q. And I don't mean that as an insult because this plugin is a very capable clean EQ plugin. However, out of the box, by default, it doesn't look as nice and isn't as functional as Pro Q, but I'm going to show you how to make it a lot closer to the industry standard. First up, this is the default window size for IIEQ Pro. If you come down to the bottom right corner, you can bring it to a much larger size. I believe this is the biggest it gets, and that is huge. For the purposes of this tutorial, I think I'm just going to keep it this big. <laughs> Next up, I want to address this issue. Already know, them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear arms like short sleeves, just trying to win a Now, what's wrong with that? Number one, it's at the very bottom of the screen. And that's because the vocal was tracked low as it's supposed to be. Here's how to fix that. Already know, them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear arms like short sleeves, just trying to win again. I this is how you do it. You hold shift and over here where there's all these numbers, you just drag up and down. Already know them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear arms like short sleeves, just trying to win again. I ain't trying to sin again. Dog, I've been in and out. However, there's another issue. The EQ curve is way too smooth. So what I'm gonna do as the audio plays. I'm going to hold control and again over here drag up and down. Already know them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear arms like short sleeves just trying to win again. I ain't trying to sin again. Dog, I've been in and out the system since Pennington. Picked up the pen again. Jotted down 20 bars. So far this year, I done ran through about 20 broads. Shuffled in my cards just like Tuscan with a boss. Send them gators for you. I ain't talking Lacoste. Already know, them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear arms like short sleeves, just trying to win again. I ain't trying to sin again. Now I'm going to show you the vocal track. I just realized I was actually on the instrumental track. <laughs> and I should have saw that right away, but it wasn't tracked low. It's that I have this plug in on bringing down the trim. That's why it was so low, because I wanted the equal the vocal, which actually is low, and I'll show you how to use that again if that's still an issue. Okay, Skoda told me let him loose, don't hold nothing back, city. Shit, ain't you supposed to be the man in your city? <laughs> you already know, them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear on So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the frequency analyzer to the point where it's useful information in terms of cuts in terms of what area it is on the screen. Okay, Skoden told me let him loose, don't hold nothing back, city. Shit, ain't you supposed to be the man in your city? Huh. You already know, them the boys don't want no part of me. I bear arms like short sleeves, just trying to win again. I ain't trying to sin again, dog. I've been in. And there we go. Now, you can save this if you want as a default. Under Reaper, it's easy. And then save preset as default, obviously. I'm not going to do that, though, because this window is too big for my taste. The next one is a feature that I think FabFilter borrowed, and I'm putting that in quotes, borrowed from, because IIEQ Pro had this years ago, is the multi-track EQ functionality. What you do is you hit this button right here, the green in the upper left, and it'll say, okay, you got to refresh your plugin. So I'm going to close the window out and then bring it back up. And what that does is it adds this little menu over here. And I've already named these. What I want to do is as I hit play, I'm going to I'm going to click right here and you'll see what it does. Okay, Skoda told me let him loose. Don't hold nothing back, city. Shit, ain't you supposed to be the man in your city? Huh? So it superimposes the frequency analyzer of the other plugin of the other track over the one that I'm working on. And what that's really useful for is seeing where there's different frequency clashes. 
visually we can see that and we can see, oh, okay, well, it's poking through here, but these are clashing way too much here and there. It's very good for guitars and vocals, kick drum and bass guitar, whatever combination of tracks that might be interfering with each other. It's really good to have. And the more of the IIEQ Pro plugins that you have right here, the more that will show up on this menu. And you do have to manually name each one of these. It doesn't pick up on whatever you name the track in the doll. You have to name it inside of the plugin. But it's very useful. And the other thing that I would mention is if you really want to get the frequency clashes, you have to put IIEQ after compression and other plugins. So you may use IIEQ Pro at the very beginning of your chain, but you would do yourself a favor to put it at the very end of the chain to see if there's any final clashes that need to be adjusted. I have one more tip for you. Once you have your frequency bands going, instead of having to do that old trick where you bring this up, you make it narrow, and boost until you hear your problem fre frequencies. You can actually just have it like this. You know, have your bandwidth how you want it. You're going to hit control and click, and it will solo wherever you take this. So you're only hearing that frequency range, which is being affected. Very, very useful little tool. And I know Pro-Q has it. And it's a little bit easier to use, but you have to use a lot of these modifier buttons in this plugin to get the most use out of it. So there's a few other things you can do, but I would say read the manual. Those are my biggest five, though. Like I said, it brings IIEQ Pro up to Pro-Q standards as far as usability is concerned for the most part. But I think this is a very cool plugin. You know, you have so many options with different things. It's a cheap plugin. It sounds good. Now that I have it set up to where, you know, it's not small on my screen, where I can see the individual EQ curves and what need to be dragged and, and brought up and down, now it's a usable plugin. I actually almost didn't buy this plugin until I read the effing manual and it gave me these tips. So I'm thinking there's probably a lot of you guys that have already demoed IIEQ Pro and didn't know you could do this stuff. That's why I made this video because I think that, you know, especially price wise, Pro Q runs in the $150 plus range. And that last time I checked, unless you have that customer loyalty discount, IIEQ Pro, on the other hand, is around $40. It's a little bit less. Sometimes there's sales, believe it or not. Even though 40 bucks is already cheap, there's sales. I think I picked this up for 30 bucks. But it's a very, very usable plugin. Like I said, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. It's clean, so it's usable on all kinds of different plugins. And the analog peak is great for boost. You have digital mode too, which obviously is like the old school style cuts, good for cuts, not so much boost. And then just, they have all kinds of other filters that you can use. So if you want a good, clean EQ plugin, I definitely recommend this program. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.